Kevin here from Whole Fleet Diagnostics. This video, we're going to show you how to use that data monitor logger function in the JAL test software. So uh, with this function, uh, we'll be able to look at individual parameter values, individual sensor values, uh, voltages, temperatures, pressures, whatever you need um, in different systems uh, or across the, the entire J1939 data link, uh, as well as show you the different ways that we can view that data. So whether it's a list or gauges or graphing, um, whichever you prefer, uh, different ways that we can kind of customize it and view our data using the JAL test software. So uh, let's flip over to the uh, the JAL test 22.3 uh, software here. I've got a simulator up. For this example, I'm going to use a Cummins ISX. Now the reason I'm going to choose Cummins is because Cummins has all those after treatment controls built in uh, to their 2350 and newer um, ECMs. Uh, so in this case, we can hook up to an ISX. Uh, let's go with the 2350 here and uh, and actually view um, view not only the engine information but also the after treatment. Whereas other manufacturers um, will have uh, a separate after treatment controller. So this kind of gives us a, a, a wide variety that we can look at here. So I'm going to get connected. Um, those of you who are familiar with JAL test, this will look familiar, right? We've got our, our list of all the different functions that we have available, whether it's component actuations or system checks, parameter changes, all that. Uh, one of those is monitoring, right? Now monitoring the section is different than that of the data recorder, okay? So if you want to record data for, for uh, viewing afterwards or replaying, um, that's, that's going to be in a separate video. We'll have that posted uh, in the near future here. We'll show you how to use the data recorder. But if I just want to look at parameter values, um, I'm going to uh, uh, use the monitoring function. So, you know, let's say that uh, I do a lot of regenerations. Um, I like to watch my my temperatures during those regens. I like to look at what the, the turbocharger position is. I like to look at uh, different values that are associated with after treatment DPF regenerations. Um, this is where I would go to view those during the regen um, the process. Okay. So um, if I go to um, uh, live data selection here. You can see SAE J1939. Um, this allows me to look at not only the values that are on the Cummins side of things, but also values from other modules across uh, across the vehicle. So these are all across the uh, the public data link. Um, specific system live data. You can see that's just for the Cummins side of things. So anything that this CM2350 module um, monitors, we'll be able to look at that in the monitoring function. Um, you can see here just below that, I've got a regen group that I created previously. So we can actually put together uh, a group of values um, that, that we like to watch. So if I do a lot of regens, um, this, is, this indicates that, hey, um, this is my, my regen values for the ISX. So you can see here, I've got those values just pop up. I don't have to go through and uh, individually select them um, and start from scratch here. So you can have like quick access to uh, just that, that, that parameter group and the, the parameters in that group uh, right here. Okay, so um, below that, and this is where I want to start, there's this really cool feature called system display and it, this is mainly the reason why I chose the Cummins module. It's because I'm going to see a list of different systems that I can view the data from. So first is the fuel system, then I've got four exhaust gas system uh, displays here. So if I bring up that fuel system display, you can see here I've got a, the layout of the Cummins High Pressure Comrade fuel system. Um, and then I've also got values um, at different points throughout that system. So you can see, for example, what the duty cycle of the fuel pump actuator is, what my rail pressure is. At the same time, I can look at my accelerator pe pedal percentage um, and, uh, and you know other values throughout the system here. So it might be nice for troubleshooting or just you know seeing um, you know how the pressures progress throughout the system, uh, where pressures are at, any certain point in time um, while I'm potentially doing a, a test drive or something like that. So uh, here's the fuel system. If I hit the, the next display here, it's going to take me to the, the after treatment system. So I've got some after treatment values here. Um, if I hit next, I've got more after treatment values, different after treatment values this time. Uh, and now I've got, uh, again, another representation. So again, different after treatment values, but still after treatment system related. And then the last one here, um, once again, so we got four different displays for, for after treatment system data um, built into this 2350 module here. Okay, so kind of nice uh, to be able to see 
um, visually kind of where uh, the components are and what those components are, are reading at any given time or what position they're in at any given time. So that's the system display, really useful. Um, if you have a chance to check that out, it might, you know, it, it, it might be uh, uh, valuable to you. Uh, if we go back to specific system live data, this is where I'm going to show you how to, you know, select and, um, and view different, uh, different parameter values um, on the system here. Uh, this warning is just going to tell you that, hey, if you want to, um, you know, if, if you want to set triggers in the measurements, um, they will, uh, they, if they go, you know, if a measurement goes over a certain value, it's going to flag that and pause it and hold it there so you can see what that peak value was. So you can, you know, set voltage limits if voltage drops down below this amount or above this amount, uh, flag that um, as, you know, and, and, and hold or freeze that value there um, so that I can determine how high it went or how low it went. So um, you, can, uh, you can set different triggers uh, for different individual uh, parameters if you'd like. So it's kind of a cool feature that they added a few revisions ago. Um, but here we're going to have a huge list of, uh, of values. Okay, so I can select any one of these and add it to my um, add it to my uh, my monitoring session. Okay, so anything that I check off here is going to show up in a, in a list form, a graph, or a gauge. Now uh, there's a lot of parameters here. So you can sort them A to Z if you'd like. So there's different ways that we can sort these things. Um, and then uh, you can also actually, and what I like to do is just uh, list them by group. So right now I have all of them selected. Like every single value that's available, I have that um, up in the, in the um, selection window here, okay? If I deselect all of these and then I go down to temperatures. This is going to load up just the temperatures into the screen here. It'll be easier to find what I'm looking for um, if I just, you know, filter by group. Uh, the other option here is you can actually search for different um, keywords through the list as well, which might help you out also. So if I'm looking for catalyst, for example, I type in catalyst and as a result, I get, you know, everything. It filters out the ones that don't have that keyword in there. Okay. So let's go our DOC inlet temperature. Um, and I'll back up and then it will show me all of the original values. Then I'm going to go up to pressures here and I'm going to select um, barometric pressure and then I'm going to go down to angular velocity and I'm going to select engine speed. Okay, so all those ones that I have selected, uh, they're still selected even though I can't see them on the, the list here. Um, they are still selected and then once I've selected all the ones I want to look at, I'm going to go over to the right hand side here and I'm going to select which way I want to view the data. So whether it's a list here Right, so here's the list of values. The nice thing about this is I've got this question mark icon here. Um, this is going to bring up uh, information uh, about that individual uh, component, right? So that diesel exhaust, uh, diesel oxidation catalyst intake temp sensor. Um, here I've got a whole bunch of information about that particular sensor, where it's located, what the values are, what the pinouts are, all that stuff. Um, that's all uh, listed in there. So you'll learn a little bit about that sensor, what it's supposed to read and what the, the specs are for it. Um, if I go down to the graphing button here, I'm going to be able to see these values in a graphical form, uh, which is great for just comparing values over time, obviously. Um, and then uh, just below that, I've got gauges. So I can view the data in, in the format of, of a gauge if I'd like. So, you know, whichever uh, is, is ideal for, you know, the situation that you're in, uh, you can view that data in three different ways. Okay. Now, before uh, we, we finish up here, uh, we can take all of those parameters I have selected and I can add them to a new group. Right? So that new group, I can name it whatever I'd like. The last one I made, I called it Regen. Um, so basically, the Jolt Test software will remember um, all those values you had selected, and it's going to hold them in this group, and that group is going to show up uh, when you go into the monitoring function for this particular module or this version of, of module uh, for this manufacturer. Okay. So if I go and hook up to a different manufacturer, I'm not going to have that uh, that value there, but um, it's a nice way to have a, uh, a quick access to different values um, or, or groups of values that I commonly like to view. Um, so there you have it. That's the monitoring function. The three different ways that we can view that data uh, is kind of handy.
that system display if you didn't know about it um, that's a, a really cool feature as well um, and uh, that takes us to um, our, our next topic which is going to be data recorder so um, if you are not subscribed yet to the channel uh, make sure you subscribe below um, lots more videos coming in the future we do our best to, to put out new videos uh, fairly frequently um, if you have any requests for videos make sure that you uh, you request it uh, either through our, our email or um, in the comments below um, and uh, yeah lots more jaw test tutorials coming up here if you need any technical support or want any more information on jaw test uh, give us a call as usual and we're, we're happy to help out take care